stage, Steve Gillespie. Everybody, hello, how you doing? Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, this is what I look like? You guys all right? <laughs> uh, you guys are making me feel uncomfortable, thank you. Uh, my bad, I don't have an ass, is that what the issue is? I don't have an ass. I don't know if you guys are looking for it. I don't have one. It's born two months premature. Apparently, those last two months, that's when your ass grows. So I don't have one of those. <laughs> and I watched you guys walk in. A lot of big fat asses in here. And uh, <laughs> jealous, jealous of big people. You guys look good, big people. You look comfortable. I'll say that. You look comfortable. You look not when you're moving, but when you're sitting down. Big people. <laughs> oh, Always floating around. Sir, you're asleep right now. Look how comfortable you are. You got. <laughs> Yeah. Just your own personal hot tub, you know? Built-in neck pillow to rest your head on. And nice cushy ass to sit on. I sit down, I have to rest on my ribs. That's what I do, I rest on my ribs. Okay, lady. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> uh, I hope I hear that one again. Uh, I was born premature. I lost a bunch of hearing when I was born. Not enough hearing for people to be nice to me, but enough hearing <laughs> for all my loved ones to be irritated with me pretty much all the time. And uh, it's the only disab disability where people are openly irritated with you. Even my own girlfriend, I'm like, hey, sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat yourself? She's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> like scoff at me. If I was in a wheelchair, would she be like, it's taking forever. <laughs> Everywhere we go. <laughs> strangers aren't nice either, you know, like, hey man, sorry, I made you repeat yourself. I lost a bunch of hearing, you know. So they, not, they always have questions. They never believe you. They're like, oh really? Oh really? How deaf are you? <laughs> what percentage deaf are you? <laughs> is it both ears? How many ears is it? Let me see your hearing aids. You would never do that with any other disability. You wouldn't go up to somebody with cerebral palsy and be like, well, how much palsy do you have? <laughs> what percentage palsy? Is it both legs? How many legs is it? Let me see your pulse. But I am in love, everybody who's in love. Everybody in love who's in love here, yeah. Sure. For you. I'm in love, I'm in love, it's going well. I know I'm in love because I don't want her to die and I think that's a good sign. And, uh, I also know that I'm really, don't cover up those laughs, lady, get them out of there. And uh, I also know that I'm in love because I do want to be there when she does die, you know what I mean? I want to see it. Yeah, dude, that's how you know, right? When you, that's when you know when someone's got their hooks in you, when you really just want to watch the life fade out of their eyes. And, uh, it's hard out there, the love, isn't it? It's hard. It's hard. Being perfect, you gotta be perfect, you know? But they chip away at you. When you first fall in love, you're perfect, but then they just start to chip away at you, you know? You're, uh, you start to figure it out. You know, my lady called me a beta male recently. Yeah. 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 To my face. She said it. And I was like, how did she know? You know what I mean? Like, I was hiding it. I wouldn't even go to the park with her in case there was geese there, you know what I mean? I, would, I didn't want her to see me get bullied by a bird, you know? But in a beta male to my face, this is what happened when we were in bed together, and that's not where this is going. I lay it down thick, I get in there, I tear it up. But, uh, I do, but I rip it up, it's ruined. I've ruined it. It is ruined, lady. Used up. Ruined. Her vagina. Uh, point is, we were asleep. We were sleeping. We both woke up to the sound of the shower running in our apartment. The shower is running. It's like 2 in the morning. That's unsettling. You know, we're in bed. We're looking at each other. I don't say anything, but I'm looking at her like, you know, like, what are you going to do about this? Like, what is your plan here? She's like, you're not gonna go in there? And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna go in there. I'm on the outside part of the bed by the wall. I'm all the way over here. 
Remember when we first moved in, you're like, I gotta be by the side of the, the door. I get up in the middle of the night. Oh, here you go. Get in there. <laughs> She's like, you're such a beta male. And I was like, ah, oh, fine, let's both go in there. <laughs> so we both go in there, right? <laughs> we get in there, nobody's in there, thank God. No one's in there. It's not even our shower, it's the people above us, they're showering. It's going right through our ceiling into our shower. So it's just poverty, that's all it was. It just turns out it was just poor. And, uh, but I don't mind being poor, sir. I don't mind. I know I can see your rich, successful face. You know what I mean? I can look it right into it. You know, it's fine. I don't mind. I'm napping. I'm taking four, five naps a day. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Take that right in your tired, successful face. Doesn't matter how big your house is when you're asleep. Oh, it's boring being successful anyway, isn't it? You're bored out of your mind, isn't it? Especially being a white dude, white dude bored out of our minds. We have nothing to overcome. We have nothing to overcome. It's boring. And Jesus, Minnesota, is there anybody that's not white in this audience? Good Lord, what is happening? But at least, like, lady, you wake up in the morning, you're like, I got the man to overcome. You're motivated. We wake up, and I'm like, ah, I guess I'll do a Tough Mudder competition. I don't know. I don't know. Life's pretty easy. I guess I'll just do an obstacle course for no reason at all. Yeah, sure, I'll crawl through the mud. That's how some people got into this country, by the way. They had to crawl through the mud. We're like, I'll pay money to do it on Saturday. I'll pay money to crawl through the mud. But I do want a beautiful wife and kids. That's what I really want, right? Just like you got, sir. Beautiful wife and kids. Not that you deserve it, but you got a beautiful <laughs> wife and kids. That's what I want, you know? So people are sad when I die. <laughs> That's all you ever hear when dudes die, isn't it? That's all you guys ever say. You hear about Greg, he passed away. It was so sad, he had such a beautiful wife and kids. <laughs> You guys never say anything about the guy with an ugly wife and kids. You don't hear anything about that guy. Did you hear about Billy? He passed away. Pretty sad. Well, his family was ugly. Probably for the best. <laughs> At least he'll never have to see his grandchildren. <laughs> Scared to bring new people into this world, though. It's scary out there. You know what I mean? Scary world. And mainly because of older people, you know what I mean? Older people are, <laughs> old people, you know, it's, you guys love rules. That's what's starting to happen. I'm noticing now, when people are, you get older, you start loving rules. You just want everybody to follow the rules. You want new rules made. You want to enforce the rules. I see it firsthand. I go to Florida every year. I see my parents. They live in one of these like retirement associations, you know, and that's all that is. That's old people getting together and being like, we don't have nearly enough rules. We need more rules, and we're going to be dicks while we enforce them. And they're just frowning underneath palm trees. It's, have you ever seen this? An old person frowning underneath a palm tree? You worked your whole life, and you worked your ass off. Just at some cold state, you know, just so you could have your slice of paradise, you know? And it is a fact that you're even standing here after four million years of evolutionary chance, just the astronomical odds that you're still here and you got this much of it left. And you're like, mm -hmm, are you wearing jeans at the clubhouse? <laughs> Time to die. You gotta go die. Go die. Die. Time to die. And if I ever get like that, I'm gonna kill myself 100%. I'm not gonna be the world's hall monitor. It's over. I'm ending it. And that's gonna be tough. I do believe in God. I do. I've done way too many psychedelics not to believe in God. I've seen him or whatever. And uh, ooh, there he is. And, uh, <laughs> So my point, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to kill myself without God knowing. I'm gonna have to find a suicide loophole. That's what I'm gonna have to do. 
be really aware of my surroundings, you know? Like, maybe I'll be hanging out with my grandkids at that point in my life, and I'll be, they'll be swimming in the pool or whatever, and one of them will say to the other one, like, whoever stays underwater the longest wins. And I hear that, and I perk up, you know? And like, I'll play, and I roll my wheelchair right in the pool. And, IV bag just slowly floats to the top. My grandkids are like, I think Grandpa won. <laughs> they get up to heaven's gates and God's like, what was that all about? Yeah, I'm like, I'm a competitive son of a bitch. I, uh... You guys have been fantastic. Thank you very, very much.